Okay, I'm just now leaving from over there where I was sitting. The time is 2.01. And while I was over there, I found out that they corrupted the voice, the audio that I made about tonight. So of that 20 to 40, 30 to 40 minutes, audio that I made they nothing showing but five minutes okay they, it was about all the things that I was talking about in the film so I was discussing some things on Coon Avenue and Brown Street that they didn't want me to discuss um while I was on Morgan there wasn't a whole lot going on. As soon as I got to where Morgan and Grand Street connects, or did Morgan Dead ends to Grand Street, they started with the, I don't know, the attempts to manipulate Rally. So that means that there was a lot of these attempts. Um, I discussed so many things and I guess I'm going to try to run away from all this mess because I don't know that that audio, you, <laughs> sometimes when I get home, they'll um, allow it to They will not. So I'm going to attempt to reiterate what I was talking about. Which is difficult because it's unnatural. You get what I'm saying? So um, I was talking about the stunts that they pulled. I didn't find out till today. Today, of course, is the night of the 31st of August, but it's technically now the 1st of September. And I was talking about what they were doing with um, my phone calls. I reiterated that. And, and um, talking about the activity that I was coming across that they were trying to pin on me so I was noting those things and when I got to BP as soon as I got to BP there was a vehicle it was more than one vehicle there was probably four or five but there was one who was playing its music really loud and that guy Waited until I was leaving BP after I ordered my beer and black and mild. Back up. I noted how weird the cashier was. They got a white female working there. And she was really weird about it. She had like she really wanted to pull some shit. Like asked me for my ID and stuff. But she realized that. It was something that she wasn't doing to nobody else. Okay. So she was suspect. But I got what I needed and I left. On my way leaving, the guy turned his music off and he was like, Hey, you all right? And I'm like, Yeah, I'm good. And I continue walking. And they were talking about how he was different because he knew that. I was approaching a, phrase, a phase where, you know, game stalking wasn't going to be valid. Oh my goodness, that's a skunk. Where it wasn't going to be valid. You see it? Oh, you can see that tree in it. Anyhow. They were talking about that. 
and trying to um, act like he is doing something different than they normally do. Because normally they sit quiet, just attempt to manipulate reality. And um, so I went on and I discussed the route that I was taking. I was still on Grand Street and I turned on the East Virus. And when I was at the corner of East Virus and Grand Street, I was discussing where Dominique Hayes <laughs> used to stay and where her first baby dad used to stay. She was on one side, he was on the other side, and I was talking about, you know, him no longer being there. And I thought that their surveillance camera was still in place. And I continue on. That's kind of where they, it wasn't until I got to where I was going on East Varus, as I'm noting these places, that I realized when I press pause and then press resume that they had, they were acting like none of the previous recording took place. Okay. So whereas there were like, it was like 30 some minutes, you know, my walk. It was only noting five minutes and 35 seconds in this recording. So you can imagine how busy I was because those details are necessary. I was talking about the game stalkers in the area and how they were trying to situate things to make sure that they could appear, they could make it appear like I wasn't alone. And you saw where I was sitting, like literally, where there's a fence, two fences, one by the expressway and one by the end of that building. And they removed the name of the building from my place. I noted it in the other video. And I believe they got mad because I noted that church that they put in across the street from CR. And um, it was kind of curtains from there. So, you see how this part just slowed down? I like he was going to say something to me and then took off. Just to look at me. He didn't do nothing but slow down and look at me. So, anyhow. Um, I got there and I was sitting there and I, that's where the audio picked up. Soon as I hit the pause button, every time I hit the pause button, I hit the pause button on three separate occasions. know because I'm going to do this on my phone. I'm going to be working on this before I leave. So I was literally there an hour before leaving. Okay? And they made it appear that none of that took place so that they could lie and claim that I was with someone. Okay? Um... And they're still turning my Wi-Fi on. Um, what else did I, I? I just noted the details. Those things that had changed about that area and vicinity since they started attacking my appearance. And they got rid of it. And when the agents was trying to lose to, you know, like, well, once you get home, you know, they just, they just want to make sure you're coming back, you know. And I was talking about how they were discussing which side of Upland Avenue I was going to return on. 
because the agents were going to be mad and they were going to use that information to, you know, things that no one sees to program them and put them in under a particular expression. And I went into detail too about 302 and 310, their baby dads. Um, I went into a lot of details about a lot of stuff. I talked for 35, 40 minutes, okay? You gotta think, when I left Upland Avenue, headed towards Sherman, I left and I hit Cole Avenue where I was noting what was going on with Grand Street drive through and all that they were doing to manipulate reality, you know. Um, they closed and, you know, he was kind of peeking to see if what he informed was true. And as soon as he saw me, he took off. But when he took off, he pulled into Grand Street drive through Okay, I haven't been to either one of those places. I've talked about all that. And the type of suspicious things that they do. Okay, to suggest that I'm there when I'm not. To lie on me and suggest that I'm smoking black and miles when I'm not. Okay? So, um, Yeah, it, that's that type of corruption is really bad because you can't reiterate it. I'm walking and talking 30, 40 minutes about everything and the type of curses and spells that are being applied. Okay, and you know that information is removed right away. They don't allow me to recall that type of stuff. So, it's, it's all bad. Right now I'm on Grand Street. Headed towards Upland, where I'll be entering the opposite end of Upland. And that's kind of what they were, that's what this is all about, okay? Which end I leave and return on, as I've stated in the past, on more than a few occasions because they're separating the properties and acting like they're not all on the same street. So, um, right now I'm approaching Morgan. After Morgan, it will be Stanton. After standing, it will be up. And all that information is gone. And I did a voice recording because it was conducive. You know what I'm saying? They were talking about, I talked about also, <laughs> I wonder if it, it probably caught that part because it was the five minutes, during the five minutes that I was there about how they try to use my activity, my rare activity, to um, implement things that are taking place or things that they would like to take place. So they want to implement something like an open canister law in Akron, Ohio, or in Ohio in general. They were talking about hobos and all kind of stuff. I went into detail about all these things that I don't approve of and how they try to use to act like they're assisting me when they are not. And the bitch, you will never believe this. That's the bitch from like near South Main Street that normally goes over the guy's house that live across the street from me at 302. I mean, not 32, 312. That's her.
that's the decoy. They're trying to hide. They're gonna call me her. And I, they're pretty much erasing me all together to claim that I don't stay there. And like I said, she'd be over there doing whatever type of favor she's doing for them. And um, occasionally she surfaces on the bus. Um, so anyhow, she continued to walk. She's going that way, but there's another hobo in sight with a book bag, as you can see. And she's continuing on near the Salvation Army. So they tried to cover all their bases, like they literally tried to cover all their bases to make sure that they could claim that it wasn't me out here having this sort of activity. And that's kind of why the guy spoke to me at BP. I, the black and white, I never got any effect from it. No different than any other time. Because they were claiming that it wasn't me. So that means when they hit my system, they were taking, taking it out and applying it to others. And so now there's a guy walking in the same direction and one walking in the opposite direction, which means that they're gonna say that I did not go to Upland Avenue. At one something a.m. I'm sure she's coming from Upland Avenue. And I checked, I'm like, you can't be serious. Bite. Okay, so he goes and he disappears off into a place where I do not go. Occasionally, I catch a bus stop right there in front of that place. But I don't have nobody there and I do not go there. So he disappeared into one, nope, 1082 Grant Street. You're calling me these filthy motherfuckers, I'm telling you. Like. If I had a piss of the worst, this would be over with. Because the type of shit that they put me through behind these sort of attacks is that bad. So imagine coming across random motherfuckers that you don't know on a daily basis. I've been to my place. I hadn't even left my apartment for today is day five. My first time out. And this is the type of shit that the government is pulling. They done fucking turned my down, completely cut the power to my security system. So if I wanted to arm it, you know, even if you're not playing, paying for a subscription, you can still use it's basic function. So if I wanted to alarm my place when I leave it, I could do that. They give information out of order. So when they found out that I reached out and I had the landlord's business partner's name, they got mad about that and cut the power. Like the motherfucking number ain't on the front. They're trying to pull some shit to act like they're just gonna find him and that, you know, they're gonna keep him from responding 
and act like none of it never happened. I just passed a filthy bitch's place that they've been using, calling me. One of many. And they always have kids. I ain't got no motherfucking kids. I'm the only one that lives along on the street that I live on. And probably every street. I don't think none of these motherfuckers are single occupants, like, other than that rooming house down there. But even them you see together and mingling with one another. You don't never see me doing no shit like that. And the details that I disclosed in that audio, you cannot get back. They were all evidential things that were taking place or things that I wanted to reference. 302 is speaking out of his window at me trying to hide informed that I was arriving his baby mom is not there he's trying to act like he's a single occupant as well when things get really extreme they have him run her out her place And I like he live alone and he don't. They got a whole fucked up situation. No one comes into my place ever. No one hits me or me. Oh my goodness, I talked about so much, I'm so nervous.